Okay, so now you can see the leaf, it's all set up. I have all the, the clean, all the napkins put in place there. Uh, just to show you, I, this might look a little gross, but these, I've been using these same ones for nearly three years. I, I just keep them all in a little bin and I've got another bin underneath here. And if they need a little bit of water, I throw them in a bucket and keep it. And they're perfectly fine. They don't get funky. There's no funny animals growing on them. But uh, it's just, it saves you money in the long run. I Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead with our mix. Um, you could do this like in a five gallon or a 20 liter pail uh, with, with a blender on your uh, uh, electric drill. I just find for myself doing little batches like this, it's just as easy. I glove up, I get in, let's give it a little mix. Mix your sand and your Portland all together with your fibers. I'm not gonna use any iron oxide in this one just for, for the sake of the demo on this one here. And uh, we'll go ahead and start adding our water. I usually add to like one or two scoops of the water in, and then I'll show you uh, how much of the fortifier. It's just just a little, just a little glurg into the. It's not a lot, and you have to make that noise glurg, or it doesn't work right. So anyway, I can go ahead and start mixing. Okay, so we're back, and the mix is done takes a minute, two minutes, you're finished. It's another reason why I like to do it by hand and not by machine is because it's quite important that you, you feel the consistency of what you got going on here. It's, it's sort of hard to describe, but can you see how I, I can toss it in my hand and it holds its shape? It doesn't run between my fingers and it's not dry, there's not big dry, but it's just something I always do is just give it a little spin and then you can sort of see, and that's, that's the right consistency, not too thick and not too thin, but it's easy for pushing out onto your project. So anyway, we can go right ahead. Now the first part's easy, is you're just gonna start loading up the leaf. So I like to start down the center. It takes me about 15 minutes to do a leaf of this size. Don't try and gauge yourself on my time do it on your time. Take your time on your first one. If it takes a half an hour or an hour, don't worry about it. It's, it's okay. If you need to add a little bit more water to your mix, if it's tightening up on you, go ahead. But, but for me, I've been doing it for over three years now. So about 15 minutes for a leaf like that. For a double size one, I'm about 25 minutes, a half an hour for, for one leaf. So anyway, we start loading up the tops and the sides. And tap it down with your hand. You want to make contact with the leaf. Now, I'll just get my camera person to come around the back side here and I'll just show you what usually the first, first step is. is. I like to fill this little back area first. Take a little bit of your mix and just sort of plug up around your stem. And you've got the big thick membranes are all meeting here. So you, you want to sort of make sure it works down into those membranes. You don't want a big cavity in there when you, when you demold it. So just make yourself a little ridge line around the stem. And then what I like to do is I just take a pile and I'll add it up to the up to the sides and you're always going to work from the top down. So now you're going to work with your small pallets and you're going to start pushing it down to the towards the edge of the leaf. Now you'll see as we go, we're going to keep it really thick in the middle and on the sides. But as we get closer to the edge, the key if you want your your leaf to look realistic is we're looking to get it down to about an eighth of an inch by time we get down to the the edges of the leaf. So here we go, we're getting down to the edge. So we're just working it down fine, fine, light taps, lightly tapping. You don't have to go over, if you go over the edge of the leaf, you actually, you'll leave a little dry spot when you unmold it, but it's, it's not critical because you can file those off. So I like to stop just a little bit shy of, uh, the edge. So sometimes I'll do this too is I'll, I'll get myself really close all the way up the side 
Okay, make sure when you get down into these valleys that you're really pushing it down into there. You always want to make sure you're making good contact with the leaf or else you're going to have uh, air spots and you don't want that. So I think you can get the idea. That's what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll usually continue all the way around both sides and then I'll come back and then do, do my finer work on the edges. It's good to work on a table like I'm on is where you can get at it at two sides. So I can go from this side and move myself over. It's really difficult when you're working up here if you're stretching your body, especially if you have a huge leaf. So it's good to work on a table that you can get at both sides or here I can get the three different sides I can get it from. So anyway, I'll carry on and we'll, we'll come back and check it from time to time. So you are going to be at times working against gravity. Uh, it can be a little challenging until you get used to it. Sometimes if it's getting a little too hard to get your concrete up, I'll move along and go to the other side until your concrete sets up a little bit and then come back and it's a little tighter and easier to push up to the sides. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of going against gravity upsides and uh, just so you're aware. So also when you're doing, when you see these little ridges, these little, try and keep them, try not to force your concrete down the more you can keep the natural ridges, the better your end product is going to look for, for realism. I mean, sometimes they'll go down. Sometimes you have to force them down. You'll have to put a fold in, but I like to try and keep all the natural ridges that I can if possible. Also on the the tips, it's important to raise the tip to make sure it's pointing. Remember you're working in, everything is in reverse. You're on the back side of the leaf, working sort of upside down. So everything you're doing is gonna be reversed when you unmold. So you want the tip to be pointing downwards because this is gonna be used for a waterfall feature. And you want the water to run off the end of the leaf. So you want it turned up but down if you get my if you get where I'm going with that okay okay so there it is it's got its its first coat on with uh, the edges done up now this is sort of the really important part to build structure to the leaf is with the remaining mix that you have left I mean you're, you're gonna have to get you'll learn on your own how much mix to have what I do when I'm doing a lot is I, I pre-mix. I usually have a lot on the side ready to go with my fibers, everything all ready to go. Just make sure your sand is dry if you're doing this, pre-making with the Portland. Um, so if you need a little bit more, you can make a batch quickly. So this is, I sort of call this like making the bones of the leaf now. Uh, this is to give it the structure that it can be, it can be used for a wall hanging or for the waterfall. So I just like to go close up to the top ridge line and I like to make a ridge down the entire length back towards the stem. Then I'm going to build along each of these where you see the, the ruffles. You're sort of making, it's sort of looking like a body with the spine and the ribs. So I'm going just, you know, within an inch or two of outside of each ridge building up a line back up to the center. Like I said, if you run out, then just make yourself a little bit more. Um, I've gotten pretty good at judging how much I'm going to need exactly. So then on the back side too, you have this sort of this large lobe on the back side, each two. It's sort of a weak point too, so I like to just leave a little bit of a pile here and we're gonna push that all down. There we go. 
Okay, so then we're going to grab your old brush. And you're going to... Sorry for ducking out of frame there. You're going to dip it in a little water, and I have concrete floors, so I can do this. I can shake out my shake out your brush, come back, and just start gently wiggling your brush. Remember, like I said, I've been doing this a long time, so you don't have to go as fast as I'm going. For goodness sakes, for your first few, just go nice and slow. Take it easy. So now you've got it sort of smoothed out, so you're going to wet your brush again every now and then. Give it a shake out. And you're going to start working from the sides back up to the center ridge line. Bringing up that concrete. Making sure you get in between the little valleys. If there's a little spot that's empty, you can reach in, fill it up again. What I've done is added a little bit more reinforcement back here on the stem end. Why this is important, because if it's going to be a water feature, this is where your hose is going to come up through the bottom of the leaf for the water feature, for the water to come through the pump and trickle on down through the, through the leaf. So you want it nice and strong. This is sort of the area too when you're unmolding, you're going to be picking it up from this area. But you, you want to avoid being grabbing onto the side, so it needs to be a bit strong right on this back side here. So, so now it's generally smoothed out, so now I'll just sort of, don't worry, see how the fibers, see how some of them are sticking out like this? Don't worry about it at all. I'll show you in a minute when we demold of, of how we get rid of that. So I kind of come, just a last little cleanup, I'll come a little bit closer to the edges now, but try not to get too, too close because you don't want to mess up. So you're just, getting rid of any little odds and sods that are close to the edges, just cleaning it up. And I'll do that to the other side. Now it, it's up to you. I don't normally do this, but you can come back now with a small, with your, this isn't really a palette knife. This is actually from my old cooking days. It's an offset palette for knife for doing icing for cupcakes or small cakes or petty fours. So you can come back, wet your palette and start smoothing out. Nobody really sees the backside. So I, I don't think it's necessary Sometimes if I do a real showpiece leaf, I will. I'll smooth out the entire back uh, and it'll be a painted back as well. But uh, it's, it's not necessary. But if, if you're a perfectionist and you, and you want to go ahead and do that. So it's hard to do the ridge line. So you're just going to kind of come along the edges, pulling up. So you get the idea. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and I'll show you how to make a hanger and uh, show you how to install that on the back. Okay. So this here is what I'm going to use for my hanger for the back of the leaf. I have a lot of these pre-made up already, so I just have to grab them. I do that in the off season, but this is to show you what I can do. This is the wire. I'm sorry, I don't know the gauge guns. I'm sure you know is uh, from curbing reinforcement and I just cut it myself with some uh, big snips and then break it off. And all you're going to do is take it, bend it in half, roughly in half like so, flatten that out a little bit. I mean, there's lots of different styles. You don't have to do it my way, but this is just the way it's always sort of worked. Flatten on one side. Come down about three quarters of an inch. Hit this side back. Take your pliers, do a little bend out, a little bend out. I like to pull them back a little bit this way so it fits on the leaf a little nicer. And then I like to curl the ends in. Just gives your concrete more to hang on to. And there we go. That's the finished hanger. Now we'll go install that on the leaf.